the egg basically. So, so I'll put in the chia seed and the ground black seed. And then also one other secret ingredient in here then, before I get to the vanilla and the flavor, this is more about the kind of structure of the, um, of the batter. So I've got some corn flour. So what corn flour does is it helps thicken it up a little bit so that when we're cooking the French toast in the frying pan, it caramelizes nicely and gets really nice, lovely texture. And that's it, simple as that. So just whisk it all together in a bowl. And we want to leave it about five or 10 minutes to activate, give the chia seed, give the flax seed a little bit of time just to absorb the liquid and to activate. And it'll start to, you'll notice it's starting to thicken up a little bit, just like, a, like it was an egg batter. So then onto the flavor. So now we can flavor up. I'll add a little bit of cinnamon. And of course, some real vanilla, the real deal. I was so excited when I was preparing this and like to see, to see the real vanilla seeds is, is quite a rarity nowadays. And honestly, I have not used vanilla for my time when I was out here cooking because I know in my heart and soul, I know it's not the real thing and it doesn't really taste like the real thing. And um, so, and I'm all about local and seasonal. So here in Thailand, unless I have access to the real thing, uh, we used to use different flavorings like pandan and lemongrass and lime leaf and different things like that. Uh, so that's it. A little bit extra for look. <laughs> and that's it. I'm going to leave that aside. And that's the batter done. Just let it rest for like five or 10 minutes. You can even make it the night before if you want to as well. And also, I can do a variation of this batter by adding a little bit of raw cacao powder. So this is just a variation, not to confuse you or anything. I'm keeping that batter that's done, that's set. We'll roll with that. I have, here's one I made earlier, the exact same. And I'm going to put in a bit of raw cacao and some coffee extract and some chocolate extract. So we'll have two types of French toast. Two types of French toast. We'll have one batter with the vanilla and the cinnamon, and we'll have another batter with chocolate and coffee and vanilla and cinnamon. Just to take it to another level. <laughs> They're options. So you, only, you don't have to do both of them. You can just do one of them. I just like to use, use all the products and show variations on how you can, how you can apply them. Okay, that's it. I'm just going to leave that aside. Okay, any questions on that? I'm going to move on to the next recipe. So any questions on that, put them through or unmute yourselves and ask a question. Uh, just to recap, it's literally just a plant-based milk and ground flax seed, ground chia seed, some corn flour, whisk it all together and then season it up with real vanilla cinnamon and then if you want you can add some raw cacao powder or chocolate or coffee extract just to take the flavor to another level everyone's good with that i'll move on okay so that's resting i've got my bread here the best bread for french toast you don't want you want a bread that's like a couple of days old because you don't want it too soggy you want it to hold itself so as you're caramelizing it the, there's still a little bit of texture to it so the sourdough bread i got yesterday um, that's perfect. So I'm going to slice that shortly and dip that in. We only need to dip it in the batter for like 20 seconds. So I want to get the other two sub recipes first. So now I'm going to make a mulberry chia seed jam. So the exact same recipe, whether you have blackberries, raspberries, or strawberries or whatever, to get started, you can use you can use frozen berries and let them defrost. There's a lot of liquid in them. If you are using fresh berries, it's good to mash them up with a fork just to get all the juices going. So I've mashed these up a little bit. We got a beautiful like mulberry liquid in there. It's just a natural liquid from the mulberries. You can mash them down with a fork and then all into a pan. Beautiful color. Um, so I discovered this jam recipe about three years ago. It was a revelation, really. It's so quick to make. It's 
tastes really good and it's super high on nutrition. And my approach, like my holistic approach to food over the last six, seven years has evolved to, to food should be first and foremost, it should be good, nutritious, it should be healthy for you. It should also taste good and look good. But we're in the fine dining realm, food, it's always how it looks and how it tastes. Nutrition is kind of like, it's an afterthought. So I started to like bring nutrition to the forefront about six or seven years ago for various reasons, which we can go into after if, you, if you're interested to know. Uh, so all the recipes I develop, nutrition is to the forefront. And my secret ingredient for the chia seed jam is chia, or for the blueberry or mulberry chia seed jam is chia seeds. And as we said earlier, chia seeds, when you add them to a liquid, they absorb all the liquids, about six to eight times more liquid than seeds, they will absorb. So that's what's going to act as the thickener for this jam. So I'm just literally bringing them up to the boil, add in the chia seeds. So it's about 250 gram of berries to 25 chia seeds. So about 10 part berries to one part chia seed. And literally all I need to do is just bring it up to the boil. Just to, just to activate it and mix it around and all that, and then into a bowl. So then depending on the berries and the time of year, different berries have different acidity levels and sweetness levels. So that's when you need to add a little bit of, you just need to taste it and balance it a little bit. So if they're very, very sweet, so that's it, turn it off and that's it, done, jam, done. The quickest jam you've ever seen. <laughs> you know, no, Jam, when you're normal sugar, the, well, I would say normal sugar, but any regular sugar that I grew up learning how to make in college was like two kilos of fruit to two kilos of sugar. It's almost equal quantities. And you cook it out for so long that all the antioxidants and any nutritional content of that berry is, has been depleted to almost probably nothing. Mm. Yummy. So I have a taste. We're going to lace it in some real vanilla, drizzle in all that goodness. So the chia seeds kind of act like the little seeds that you get in raspberries or blackberries or strawberries. So it gives a feeling that you're having, um, you know, a regular jam. And then have I got any lemon or lime? I don't have any lemon or lime, but it's okay. You can put in a little squeeze of lemon or lime. Um, I have a little bit of coconut nectar there just to give it a little kick. Just a little bit, not much, everything in moderation. And that's it, as you can see, you know, it's nice and you can leave some berries quite whole and someone, you can mash them up with a fork and just pour it in a bowl to cool. And that's it. Done, so as that cools, it's gonna thicken up nicely. As you can see, it's warm, it's steaming now, just out of the pan. Uh, but as that cools, it's gonna be delicious. So we always have a batch of this to hand and put it on top of porridge, on top of pancakes, waffles, French toast, uh, anything like that, it works, it works uh, delicious. Loads of protein, chia seeds have got great omega fats, omega threes, which many people are, um, uh, don't have enough of. Uh, very high in protein, very good in fiber. Fiber is another thing most people don't have enough of. So incorporating something like this into your breakfast cereals on a regular basis is a winner, I believe. Okay, so that's that done. Easy, quick. I'm all about quick and easy recipes as well. Cooking should not be too complicated. I like to simplify it as much as possible to make it accessible. If things are too complicated, too difficult, too many steps, then it's like, ah, oh, no, <laughs> you know. So any questions on the blueberry chia or on the mulberry chia seed jam before we move on? Not yet, okay. I suppose blueberries. Yeah. Have you used blueberries? Oh, it's more, yeah, blueberries, of course. I usually use blueberries, uh, blackberries as well, any type of berries. Um, it's if you want to use frozen berries, frozen berries can be okay because they're picked and frozen very quickly. So it does lock in a bit of nutrition as well. Um, so when you defrost frozen berries, there's a lot of liquid in them. So that's ideal for making a jam because the chia seeds is going to thicken up that liquid again. Um, if you're using fresh blueberries, what you can do is just mash them with a fork 
mash them down with a fork or just put them in a blender and blitz them down a little bit just to crush them and get all the natural juices coming out. Uh, same concept, same technique if you're using strawberries or raspberries. Um, yeah, so by all means, blueberries, they work good. How much does it keep? It keeps, um, I would say, four to five days. And anything that's, anything that's made fresh and homemade, like after four or five days, it'll start to deplete in flavor, in life force energy and in nutrition. Um, so either freezing it, you can freeze it when it's cooled, it'll preserve it for longer. And uh, what happens, chia seeds, you know, they're actually, you've brought them to life after soaking them. So over the course of a few days, they'll still keep activating still. So the jam will get a little bit thicker. So you might just need to add a little bit of liquid to it, a little bit of orange juice or something, just to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Uh, but I'd say no more than five days, uh, unless you want to make a big batch and then freeze it in little containers. That works good. Do you have to grind the chia seeds for the jam? No, not the jam, I don't, no. I grind them for the French toast because I don't want whole, whole chia seeds in the French toast. I grind them because I want them to just thicken the liquids for me, to thicken it to like a, an eggy French toast kind of batter consistency. But in saying that as well, like you, when you grind them, you get a lot more nutrition out of the seeds as well. So it's quite a healthy French toast batter, having all the flax seeds and chia seeds like absorbed into the bread and everything. It's a good way of getting some extra nutrition. But no, no need to, um, I blend, so just to recap, I blend them for the, uh, French toast batter and just keep them whole for the jam because when you have them whole for the jam it kind of takes out it it's like a, the seeds you know the seed you have in the in the jams it's kind of acts a bit like that lovely <laughs> lovely jubbly okay on to my next one before we make the batter so nut butter very expensive to buy in the shop, um, making them at home much more cost effective and you can add in whatever flavor you want to them. We usually make a homemade peanut butter or walnut butter. Brazil nut butter I made recently, it's my favorite one because um, very high in nutrition, very tasty as well. So to make nut butter, you don't need to add any other oil or any liquids. What happens is, is when you put it into a blender, to blend and you slowly blend it. And what happens is all the natural oils come out of the nut or seed if you're making a seed butter and you just get a naturally from blending it, it, it gives it the texture of a butter. Uh, so the more oils like different nuts like macadamia nut and Brazil nuts will be much wetter nut butter because they're much higher in fats and much higher in natural oils. So things like, um, um cashew nuts and what other nuts uh pecan nuts they won't be as wet of a consistency because they're not there's not a, as high a fat content in them so to make your own homemade to make your own homemade nut butter toast off your nuts first no oil no salt just toast them in the oven until they're lightly golden brown and then let them cool you want to let them cool otherwise it's just all going to get overheated when you're blending them so you can use like a smoothie maker one like this if you have the attachment to, to move it around or the, the Magimix style blender, the one that goes around and around. Uh, that one is probably the best for making it because uh, you know the one the blade goes around like the Robocoop or the, I think it's a Magimix it's called. So that would be my first recommendation for making it, but it works well in this too. So all I'm gonna do is blend this for like two to three minutes. And then I'm gonna turn it out into the bowl. I'm gonna add some vanilla and probably a little bit of coconut nectar or maple or whatever you wanna add, just to put a touch of sweetness in there. Not much, that's optional. Uh, so it might get a little bit loud. Block your ears a little bit. I'm just gonna blend this and get going. Good. So what happens is it goes to breadcrumbs first. And if you're using it for energy balls or cheesecake base, you could take it out now. Well, we're gonna keep blending it for another couple of minutes and it, all the natural oils will start to come out and it'll start to turn into a butter. Back in a moment. <laughs> you can see, yeah, just breadcrumbs now. 
So we're going to keep keep blending for another couple of minutes. So hang tight. Back soon. Block your ears. This is an important aspect of it to keep moving it around. Hook it up. You want? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come in and say hello, Tara. Come in. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Whew, it's getting loud. Okay, so as you can see, it's gone to the next level. It's just starting to turn to a butter. Can you see? just starting to turn into a butter. So really important to have this contraption here just to like aerate it and move it around. So another minute. Whew, it's getting hot. Okay, and that's it. So I'm gonna add in the flavoring now, but as you can see, now we've got a nice cashew nut butter to drizzle, to like put on top of the French toast or pancakes or whatever you like putting nut butter on. So now season her up. A good, generous lashing of real vanilla. Be generous. <laughs> It's all good. It tastes yummy. You'd think it was International Real Vanilla Day. <laughs> What'd you say? You'd think it was International Real Vanilla Day. You would, yeah. It's in celebration. I don't like it's a it's a treat. Really, like I really no, this is honestly, I'm not making this up. Like I really respect certain ingredients that are luxury and to have them and put them into something, it's kind of like a a celebration like even a coconut when i crack open a coconut every day it's like whoa you know it's like so grateful for it so yeah i'm honestly happy to have the real deal because it's rare i haven't had it for so long out here so i put in a little drizzle of coconut nectar and a good lashing of real vanilla give that a little a little uh, at this stage now you could add in some spices if you like add in some pumpkin spice since it's halloween and so on or some like a, a mulled wine spice or a um, cinnamon or nutmeg or anything like that. Or also, if you want to make it a chocolate variation, put in some raw cacao at this stage as well, just to flavor it up. And then off we go. Yeah. And that's it. Done. Done. So you can keep it in a glass jar in the fridge or at room temperature. It'll last for quite a while. It lasts for like, it's just nuts. So it's gonna last easily 10, 20 days. So there we have it, cashew nut butter ready. A little bit of a workout, but if you have a Maggi mix, it's much easier. You don't have to pound it. You just have to like scrape down the sides with a spatula. best hydration. Cool. Okay, so I think we're ready to make the French toast then. <laughs> the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> okay, so some nice, nice little chunks of bread. A generous thickness. Make extra for Tara. Yeah. <laughs> Tara, you're going to come in and say hello. <laughs> we will i'm going to introduce the fruits here shortly and uh tara might come in and and explain a couple of them all a lot of these are new for me when i moved out here to thailand every and still every time i go to the market i still see ingredients that i've never never seen or never heard of before it's incredible so many indigenous local ingredients that don't travel all around the world they're just local and seasonal so it's really from a chef's perspective 
It's like, um, like being a kid in a sweet shop out here at the market sometime. So, so there we have it, the, back to the batter. You'll see it's thickened up a little bit, not too much. I'm just gonna whisk it so it's all evenly incorporated again, just so the corn flour hasn't uh, settled at the bottom. Uh, spoon. So it's kind of like, like an eggy, like an eggy batter consistency. Perfect. You gotta taste everything. And then that's it, yeah, pop them in. Just as you're, you're, as you're making French toast. So I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut oil, a nice aromatic coconut oil to the pan. No butter, no need for butter. Oh yeah. And don't want to soak it too long or it's gonna to go too soggy. But a good 10 seconds, drip off that excess. And in they go. And just wait for the aromas of cinnamon and vanilla to take over the jungle kitchen here. And I'll do one chocolate one as well. Okay, there we have it. Kids will love this as well. I have great memories of this when, from being a kid, you know, it's like a special treat. I think food and childhood memories are so important. And kids, they, they would love this really, like it's a treat. And it's not that difficult, you see, to make it. The main thing is having the ingredients ready and it's not that complicated of ingredients. Some plant milk, corn flour is a secret ingredient, chia, flax, and then flavored up with vanilla and cinnamon. And then some like day old bread, some good, nice sourdough bread. Again, sourdough bread is probably the only bread I usually use. It's been fermented, so it's a lot easier on the digestion. Oh, this is gonna be nice. So I'll do this one after. No. Okay. And I want to go on slow heat, low and slow. Like start off, start off low and bring it up. If your pan is too hot and you put it in, it's going to char and burn a little bit. Yeah. Smelling good. So they're gonna cook them two to three minutes either side. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna introduce, unless you have any questions, I'll introduce some of the fruits we got going on here today. Papaya, called Malaco in Thailand. We have our own one literally right outside the door we pick it from. Uh, before they turn ripe, they're a green fruit. They're used a lot in Thai cuisine for some tam, like a raw, a raw salad. But then when they turn orange, they're the most, delicious fruit, like really healthy, really um, a really orange kind of um, color to it. Very, very good, good for skin, good for digestion and very cheap over here, so cheap. So we got some uh, papaya, we got some mango. There's mangoes in Thailand are kind of like apples and pears back home in that like they're literally like hundreds of different varieties all around the country, different sizes, different shapes. I've seen them all sorts of shapes and sizes. Mango papaya, so we're in Phuket here. Phuket is famous for pineapple. They're called saparot, saparot. So they grow, I, before I came to Thailand, I thought pineapples grew on a tree. Does anyone here, does anyone here think pineapples grow on a tree? I, I, I used to. They actually grow on the ground. A spoon, please. Pineapples actually grow on the ground and it's incredible. There's loads of pineapple plantations here in the neighborhood and massive like plantations of pineapples and they grow like a huge, huge plant. And then just this little pineapple pops up. It takes about a year to grow to that size. And there's so many pineapples in Phuket, literally they cannot sell them because there's not as much demand as the supply. And you can buy them for about 10 baht, which is, how much is 10 baht? Oh, look at that. Oh. 
<laughs> nice. One is a little darker than I would like. It goes quick. So I'm just going to put in a little bit more coconut oil. The coconut oil as well helps caramelize it and gives a lovely flavor to it and, and so on. Okay, so that's the pineapple. And we have a dragon fruit. Check this out. Red dragon fruit. It's the same color as beetroot kind of, and a really potent color. You put that into a smoothie and you get the most pink, incredibly vibrant colored smoothie. So what I do is I keep it in the freezer, diced usually, and then blend it with a little bit of banana and plant milk. Uh, super healthy. So that is it. Well, we're done. We go quick. Okay, that's French toast done. One done, two done. Oh, hot. In with the chocolate one. It's a bit yummy, yummy. Nice. What was in the chocolate basket? Okay, so chocolate French toast on the go. Oh, <laughs> no vanilla there, some oil. And what else have we? Little baby apples from Northern Thailand. And we have here, these are called, what are these called, Tara? Come in and say hello. <laughs> okay. Hello, this is Tara. Tara's been teaching me a lot about um, Thai cuisine. Tara comes from the north of, northeast of Thailand. Um, and her mom is a cook, a home cook, like real authentic. Thai food, so I've been learning so much about authentic Thai cuisine, and Thai cuisine is a lot more than Thai curries and Pad Thai. It's a huge, diverse culture, cuisine, ingredients. Um, it's incredible. So Tara, what, what are these? So in Thai, we call it salad. Uh, I think in English, I don't know if it's called Thai it's called salad. Salak. okay. Yes, snake, salad. snake fruit. Yeah, it's probably originated from Indonesia. And how do you prepare them? So as you see here, it's gonna be a little little needle. So be careful with your fingers. But it's because I've killed it all my whole life. They're time. very um so very spiky, very spiky on the outside. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know how to call it the English. Yeah. Here you just have to peel the skin out. And there is a two different type of this one. The two main different uh, two main type of this. The first one is very very sour and have a big seed. So you're gonna eat just a little bit of the meat of all of that. And the second one. Oh, I don't know if they can hear you. Smoke. You're talking to this. <laughs> um, <laughs> no <laughs> microphone. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear. All right, sorry. No microphone. Yeah, and there is another That's type that has more seed. So you just have to eat the meat outside and spit the seed out. Okay. Nice. My favorite, the most young. Mm. Strong smell. Yeah. And this one in Thai we call lamut. Lamut, in lamut. In English, it's uh, spodilla. 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 Yeah, spodilla. spodilla. Yeah. Like spodilla. That. So, They're very uh, like caramelly, caramelly flavor, aren't they? Like a custard. Custard caramel, kind of brown sugar consistency or brown sugar flavor. Almost looks like a pear, very similar in characteristic to a pear. But softer, sweeter, and stronger smell. Mm. Mm. Nice. So I'm just going to cut up a few of each of these to garnish, to garnish the uh, French toast. And then what about these? We got another beautiful fruit here, custard apple, I believe. It's called custard apple. It's not originated from Thailand also. It's, I think it's come from Indonesia as well. You just have to, it looks like artichoke. It looks like an artichoke, yeah, like a globe artichoke. And then you just have to peel it out like this. And as you see, there is a little white meat, but inside there is a seed like black one. Okay, so you take the seed out, the black seed out, spit them out. Yeah, when you just like a then, grape. Yeah, and then you just like you see you can pull it out here, and then eat it. Nice. I grew up eating it a lot, but then when I become an adult, I just yeah. 
I think in Thailand, like there's so many beautiful, healthy, tropical fruits here. Like a lot of locals actually, I wouldn't say take them for granted, but don't actually realize the, how nutritionally dense and how healthy they are. Like they're so cheap at the market. They're sweating like mad. So I think all the, the French toast is ready. Time to serve up. So we've caramelized it both on both sides. It's nice and a little bit soggy, a little bit crispy. We can stack them up a little bit here for an Instagrammable shot, of course. <laughs> of course, it has to go on Instagram, otherwise it didn't exist, otherwise it didn't happen. <laughs> and yeah, this is the fun part. Thanks. See, she's a good sous chef. Huh? <laughs> we had to turn the aircon off. <laughs> because um, yeah, it'll um, impact the sound. So this is where you can get creative. Thank you, Tada. Kapoon crap, kapoon crap. <laughs> She's been teaching Thai as well. Who passed Thai I need now? I show off now. <laughs> Thank you. So now, now we'll just garnish it up a little bit. So I got some fresh fruit chopped. I'll chop a little bit of each. And then we'll do a little bit of a Q&A. Mm -hmm. And OK. Some Phuket pineapple. So we'll start a Q&A session in about five minutes as well, everybody. Thanks for staying tuned. Uh, Thanks for your patience. Hope you all learned something. And here we'll plate them up. So again, like with this part, again, like I don't be too refined and too kind of precise. I think I like a, a, a messy kind of rustic refinement. I think mother nature is the true artist. And as a chef, it's just a matter of like letting, letting the ingredients stand out for themselves, having things taste how they should taste and um, letting the ingredients speak for themselves. So I got some pineapple, got some papaya. We get some of these beautiful dragon fruit. The color is absolutely incredible. And nice, nice. We have so many fruits. Good way of getting your five a day as well. Uh, so now I'll just put a little bit of the jam on top. When I'm plating a dish, I'm always thinking like how, how someone eats it. And a dish like this, you want to spread it all out a little bit so that every, every little bite full and fork full you take has a little bit of French toast, a little bit of jam, a little bit of peanut or cashew nut butter. And then we're going to finish it all with a drizzle of vanilla and coconut nectar. So a little bit of the cashew nut butter there on top. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> okay. And then I think that's it. I put a, I have a little bit of the saparillo fruit here. Yeah, there's a seed. Okay, so I put a little bit of apple, a few slices. Oh, nice. And then I have another little neat little trick I'll show you. Where's my Brazil nut gone? So Brazil nuts really good. Really recommend eating one or two a day, really great in selenium. Uh, eating them on their own, they can be very dry, very bland. So adding them into a nut butter or what I do with a little microplane, I like to grate it on top. And it kind of looks like, like you're sprinkling some Parmesan or white truffle on top of the dish. Fancy indeed, yeah. But it's just a nice way of getting a little garnish, getting a little bit of nutrition and making it look nice. So it's all a win, win, win. And then, oh, we got these butterfly pea, yeah. So a little, just for look and for flavor, some <laughs> vanilla coconut nectar, just to top it all off. Just in case there wasn't enough vanilla in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So I use a lot of coconut, coconut nectar over here because it's so plentiful, it's so cheap and um, so delicious. It's kind of like, uh, acts like a honey and a nice flavor to it too. So a little extra drizzle of that, yummy. A little, I'm all about like good food should be, you know, healthy food should taste good as well. And just having a little bit of honey or, or a little bit of maple or just a little bit of moderation, I believe is okay. Um, but just be careful, obviously, with sugars and that. Um, all these fruits are all natural sugars. I know some people try to avoid fruits because they believe it's full of sugars. I'm the, I, I think they're made by Mother Nature. They come from a tree. They're natural sugars that have fiber and proteins and other nutrients and micronutrients as well. So I believe they're a good form of sugar. And we got these beautiful flowers here. Has anyone heard of them before? Butterfly pea flower. No. An incredible flower. I never, I never heard of it till I came to Thailand and I, someone gave me a blue tea. And I'm like, what's this? How did you make the tea blue? And it's made from the flower. You literally put a butterfly pea flower in the tea. It turns it a vivid blue color. So blue that you would actually think it looks like, a, it looks like an unnatural food coloring. Uh, it's been used in Indian Ayurvedic as Ayurvedic remedies for hundreds of years. It's good for helping you sleep, good for anxiety and just really beautiful flower it grows in abundance out here so i think we're done that's the whole like brunch feast ready that's something you happily snack into for a late breakfast early lunch it's Happy. yeah yummy <laughs> can everyone see all right i'll take a nice picture for the instagram and I'll, I'll send you all over but it's um as you can see you know the french toast is quite a straightforward recipe um and it's a healthy-ish recipe uh, loads of fresh seasonal fruits. So every one of your plates when you make this will look slightly different. And that's the nature of real food, depending on the time of year and your location in the world, your dishes, your recipes will look slightly different. And I, I used to give a recipe to 10 chefs when I was head chef in the kitchen and every single chef or every student will have a completely different result because everyone has a different skill base, different creativity. And, and that's nice in a way. So I'd say with food, you know, play, explore, enjoy experiment learn about new ingredients and um yeah enjoy good food is all about celebration real foods um yeah it's a gift you know so hope you enjoyed Thank we're you. going to do we're going to do some questions now and uh yeah any q a and anything you want to add janet and uh yeah cool it's so fantastic to have you here on on, on this special day jamie Thank and you. Uh, I'm sure that we will do more in the future too. Yeah. I think we better put this recipe out as our special recipe to celebrate International Real Vanilla Day 2021. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure to be part of it all. Really am. And uh, amazing since we met in the Castle Hotel all them years ago. Truffle. Say hello to our little doggy Truffle as well. She likes to come in. <laughs> she likes to come in here. The Woo. Damn. <laughs> we feed her well she likes she likes growing up food she doesn't like uh, dog food <laughs> yeah <Good girl. laughs> so has anyone any questions on the recipe or the techniques anything i might have like gone by too quick or any other sort of things um any anything really yeah. um, what's in the chocolate batter jamie so the chocolate batter is uh, to start with is the plant milk and the chia seed and the flax seed and the um, corn flour. That's like the base batter. And then I added in the cinnamon and the vanilla for the, for the standard batter. And then what I did is I took that batter and I added a spoon of raw cacao and I added some of the little pods, uh, chocolate extract and coffee extract as like <laughs> optional, optional, optional seasoning flavors. <laughs> and honestly, they're three of my favorite things like coffee and chocolate. I love chocolate. I love coffee. Although I stopped drinking coffee three months ago because I loved it too much. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That was the chocolate one. Yeah. So it's the first time I did the chocolate one, actually. But when you have and that's the beautiful thing about cooking is when you have a basic recipe that works and you understand how it works, then you can add in different flavor variations. So you can have a base recipe, but many different variations of the basic recipe. Um, so yeah, that's the, um, that's the chocolate one. I'm looking forward to tasting it. First time I've, I've done the chocolate one. 
So look forward to trying it. <laughs> Before the dog gets in. No, 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 no. Truffle gets the trim. She has the uh, fruit trim. She loves fruit and, and broccoli and everything. No, it's, it's for us, Truffle. Thank you. Enjoy it, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you. We will. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming in today. And people can uh, people can sign up to your their monthly are they monthly sessions that you do? Um, yeah. So actually, I'm going back to Ireland for a little while at the end of this month. So the live virtual oh. classes are on a little bit of standby for a while. But I'm releasing a very new exciting thing in January. It's going to be um, Life on Plants, which is a meal planning, meal prepping service which links in with virtual cooking so every every week i'll be doing a live class on batch cooking and prep cooking and then i will send out all the recipes and all the ingredient lists and everything to back it up and then show show whoever wants to learn how to do the batch cooking and then each week and each month we'll evolve with the season to showcase what's in season and the aim behind it is to teach people to encourage and teach people at home to batch cook and meal prep so you take two hours on a Sunday or two hours on a Wednesday and you prep everything up for two or three days ahead. So it saves time in the long run. It saves money. And it's a way of having healthy food in the fridge for when you're hungry, you know, because we're all busy. We all have work to do and we don't have time to cook two or three hours a day. So if we can change the way we approach cooking at home and batch cook and meal prep on certain days, it's kind of like setting yourself up for success. It's, it's a different way to approach it. So I'm launching that in January. I've been working hard on it behind the scenes. So um, follow me on, the, on Instagram or that and like keep up to date. Or if you want to send me your email address, I send out a weekly uh, recipe and all that and keep in touch with everyone on a weekly basis. Um, Fantastic. And when we started, we started today, Jamie, with uh, Irene, who's a vanilla farmer's daughter in Tanzania. Oh, and nice. she came in on Zoom. I don't know if you saw, if you saw her. She came in on Zoom and took us for a tour around, uh, around their vanilla farm, well, nice. well their farm which, nice. with the vanilla. And uh, she said she'd love to come over here one day to find out what people actually do with this vanilla pod. Yeah. So, so this morning we've gone from uh, Irene saying well this is where this is where i was brought up and this is what i have but what on earth do people do with it and now you've shown us all yeah. how to do so i hope that she's been tuning in amazing lovely it's amazing to get the whole story from the farmer who grows it and like just looking after the soil and the farm and the crops and everything is a huge labor of love so i think connecting the two from from earth and farm and supplier and producer to to the end, the end chef or cook or recipe maker or anything. It's, it's beautiful to have that whole, whole story. So I love what you do around that, Janet, really. Congrats. Well, thank, thank you. Take care. Yeah, you too. Enjoy the rest of the day and the cream teas and the curries and everything. And we'll enjoy the French toast. <laughs> Truffle, say bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.